this is the first episode all season that I have truly, truly felt the tension. That like after watching this episode, I'm like, ugh, ugh. It was this episode for me. Let's let's talk about it, y'all. What's good, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 18, an iconic ending. If you have not already, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video if you enjoy it. And then leave some comments down below because I feel like it's a lot to talk about. All right. So the episode picks up right where the last one left off with the fight. So, y'all, last week when I said we were not going to see the fight, I meant on the show. <laughs> <laughs> on the show as we did not the cameras were down conveniently during the fight so I know that the fight was like all over social media I was referring to us not seeing the fight on the episode as we did not so we pick up with Deborah running up on Candace after the fight the cameras I guess are I guess they're like let's you know get some footage because it was pure mayhem and pure chaos so apparently, well, not apparently, we saw the footage, Deborah threw a drink on Candace after Candace had turned her back. So what I saw, okay, this is just what I saw after watching all of the, the, the times that everybody has seen the fight. Candace is over to the side. Deborah, because we have the audio now, Deborah runs up to her and asks her, so um, I heard you were calling me Sesame Street. You were calling me Sesame Street. Candace is saying, get her away from me. You're the help. Get her away from me. So Candace must have turned around. Deborah pours a drink on Candace. Candace reaches for a champagne bottle. We see Sharice grab the bottle out of Candace's hand, puts it down, and Sharice is like grabbing Candace. While Sharice is grabbing Candace, Kiana jumps in and her and Deborah are fighting. Now we all saw the scuffle where everybody's trying to break it up and then they eventually like fall down and this how shit gets real. So Deborah is saying, well she threw a drink on me and I and I punched her. Deborah seems emotional and a, a step away from a cry as if you didn't start this. You started this Deborah. You started this, Deborah. So Kiana is bleeding from the head. I said, I'll be. Kiana is bleeding from the head in the bathroom. Karen goes straight into like mommy mode. And it's like, y'all, I can't, y'all can't do shit and be responsible. So now, now Karen got to reach in her bag and, and make sure everybody's okay. Wendy is saying that she threw a drink on her. She threw a drink on her. Candace is over to the side. And I guess it, it's like five people holding her back. It didn't take five of y'all to hold Candace back. Candace is not a fighter. We have seen that. That's no shade to her before somebody takes offense to it. I'm not a fighter either. I'm not about to fight nobody. I'm grown and I got shit to lose. So does Candace. Kiana's in the bathroom, bleeding from the head. She said that Deborah hit her in the head with a glass. The other ladies are in the confessional, sans Ashley, saying that this was intentional. We all heard that, yes, Ashley did say, are the cameras down? Are we wrapped for the day? The other ladies, Mia, Wendy, it was Mia, Wendy, Kiana, and I think I don't, and Karen, they're all saying in um, NECA, this felt intentional. This felt like Deborah showed up with a chip on her shoulder. So Karen rides in the hospital with, rides in the, hospital, rides in the ambulance to the hospital because she said, I didn't drive tonight. I'm not going to do this with you, Karen, in this video. Um. So when they were talking at the end, Ashley is talking to Cookie, who I guess is Robin's friend, and Ashley is showing no remorse. Ashley is all but smirking. Ashley, you about to get fired. You about to lose your job. Like, why are you smirking? Somebody's on their way to the damn hospital. So Ashley is smirking. 
um, it's, it's crazy. So then, okay, so here's my thoughts on this entire situation. One, I'm glad that Sharice grabbed the bottle from Candace and this is why. Hear me out. Let me finish the whole sentence. If Candace would have used that bottle, whether throwing it or even tapping it on Deborah, she's going to get an assault charge. It's, they're not going to care if it's self-defense or whatever. So I'm glad that Candace was not able to hit her with the bottle, not for Deborah's protection or Deborah's sake, but for Candace's. Candace has too much to lose to get arrested, to go to jail over some bullshit that Deborah brought to this party. So there's that. I'm glad that Cherise had the wherewithal to take the bottle out of Candace's hands. You can't fight with a bottle, y'all. And I, I get the whole thing. If somebody runs up on me, I'm going to pick up the first thing I can, I can find too. One, because I can't fight. I'm not a fighter. I have never been in a fight in my entire life. I have always had friends that can fight. <laughs> So I've never been in a fight, but for the sheer fact that I would hate, I would absolutely hate to see Candace get a charge or some type of bullshit from this because she had a bottle in her hand, right? So there's that. Two, Deborah, absolutely not, sis. You are not that upset that this woman called you Sesame Street. It's not the first time you've heard it. This is not the first time you have heard that you are not attractive or that you're not pretty. This is not the first time you have heard that your eyebrows look bad. This is not the first time, Deborah. But you are not that press. You Tamar got called a Muppet on live daytime national color television. They all looked at her. I cannot believe Deborah. I can't believe Deborah. I can't believe the fact that Ashley, well, I can with Ashley, but I can't believe like how this transpired. This was silly. Absolutely silly. Ashley, if you get fired, this is why. This is why. <laughs> I didn't believe that Ashley would get fired. I thought they would just like demote her to friend of the show, but Ashley might be gone. This was a bad look. Now that we have seen everything that has happened, this was a bad look. Then for you to try to flip it and blame this on Candace when your friend ran up on her and threw a drink on her first. Deborah's in the wrong. There's no way around that. Deborah is absolutely in the wrong. And y'all know I don't ever, I don't always see it for Candace. But I can keep her real and I can call a spade a spade. Candace is not wrong in this situation. So we get to the, the monarch party. We had three scenes, <laughs> three scenes this episode. The tension is heavy. You can tell that everybody is just like, bah, right? Because it's only two days later. It's very fresh. Kiana didn't even come. So Karen shows up first with security. <laughs> I mean, hell, Giselle showed up with security after Monique's situation, too. Karen shows up with security. Sharice comes in with this boot. I was so over it. I didn't realize Sharice was that deep into the scuffle that you fell, girl. Okay. Ashley is in her confessional saying, I'm going to put a pause on my friendship with Deborah because Deborah apparently the next morning after we found out that, you know, after the fight when we all found out that some shit went down, Deborah was doubling down on it, okay? So what that tells you is the next morning after the adrenaline has calmed down, after, you know, her, her Hennessy, because she's clearly on some brown liquor, after her Hennessy then, you know, soaked up out of her system, for you to still feel like this was justified what you did, Deborah, girl. So Giselle comes in, tells Karen that her dad made it through surgery and she's taking it one day at a time. You can just see that Giselle is out of it. You can tell that she's over it. She like, she probably really doesn't want to be there, but she has filming obligations. You can just tell that her mind is elsewhere. Then to find out that her, her party ended up in a fight over some bullshit between one person that she does not like. And then Ashley's friend, your business partner, I would be irritated too. Right. Um, 
Giselle said that you find out who your friends are in times like this. And I, I know a lot of people like to act like Karen and Giselle are not friends. They are friends, people. We have seen that they are friends. They're able to go back and forth and always come back together the way that they do because they are friends. They are two people that understand how to play the housewife game with each other. Yes, Giselle has done a ton of shit to Karen. The tax issues, all this other type of stuff. Karen drags Giselle constantly too. From her hair to her, her house to her clothes. Like it's to her not having a man. Like they they understand how to be the consummate frenemies so that they can continue to lead the show. Giselle has just lost her way with it. And you know, the Candace shit got the best of her, right? So Sharice said that when Candace grabbed the champagne bottle, she was holding Candace back and that's how she got caught up in the scuffle. Okay. Giselle's pissed that this happened at their event. She's like, here I am leaving to go tend to my ailing father and y'all fucking the shit up. She, I feel like she has every right to be mad, right? Ashley is now saying that Wendy and Candace were calling Deborah names. Look, do I believe that they were? Probably. But that is still no reason to go run up on her. Because Ashley, you are only saying that you're only bringing it up to get the blame to shift to Candace and literally nobody's going to fall for it. Candace calls all of y'all names all the time. That's what she does. That's the type of person she is. She talks about y'all. She calls y'all names. She talks about your skin color. That's what Candace does. That is still not justification for Deborah to come to this event and run up on Candace. There's no justification for that, right? So Cal was like, okay, so who was there to protect Kay? And Cal basically said that if you're going to run your mouth, you should be able to deal with what happens afterwards. I agree with that too. Candace is mouth almighty, tongue everlasting, right? Which is my issue with her. Candace does too much of this. She absolutely does. Candace should be able to back herself up. You got to be able to stand on your words. But at the same time, this is not Candace's fault. <laughs> It's just not. Deborah ran up on her and threw the drink on her first. So, which like everybody is saying. So it's not like it's a, a back and forth. Like that is basically what everybody is saying. Now, Giselle doesn't know what's going on. She's pissed about the whole thing. But I saw people on Twitter saying, well, of course, Giselle's going to blame Candace. I don't think Giselle is blaming anybody because she doesn't know what happened. I think that she would believe what Karen is saying happened, what Ineka is saying happened, what Mia is saying what happens over Ashley being like, well, they were, she was calling them rodents and rats and stuff. I, Candace probably was. She probably was. But that is still no reason for you to want to get into a fight with her, for you to run up on her. We are grown. <laughs> we're grown. Y'all all have too much to lose. Maybe Deborah don't have shit to lose. I don't know. I don't know. So Mia shows up with her kids and her mom was there, which was shocking and a good, you know, good surprise. Good for you, Mia. Your mom, you know, she has issues with her mom. Candace, um, I'm sorry. So Robin shows up. Robin said, look, I was ready to go home. So I had left the area. I was just kind of over to the side with production. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened at all. Okay. Um, she said, I just heard the melee and was probably like the, what the what? So, and I'm, I know, I know <laughs> Robin is probably like, this ain't got nothing to do with me. I wasn't over there. Y'all can't blame me and Giselle. Cause y'all know anything that happens, people are either going to blame Candace and Wendy, or they're going to blame Giselle and Robin. So I know Robin and Giselle was like, we weren't even there. Right. So. Candace's sister pulls Ashley to the side and said, I need to talk to you. <laughs> Bring it on over. So Candace's sister was really on some, is, is this how Deborah get down? Because I would hate to have to whoop her ass real quick. That was the energy I got from Candace's sister. Valid. You not going to like run up on my sister, throw a drink on my sister, and then feel like next time I see you, it's not going to be on site. 
right? Kiana um, is not there, but everybody's just kind of talking um, about her in regards to her. Everybody's really upset about it, right? Like I said, the energy is heavy. The energy is very, very heavy. So Candace said that Deborah lunged at her and she was trying to figure out what to do before she could figure out what to do. Kiana was fighting for her. Now, Candace, I, I mean, we saw you pick up that bottle pretty swiftly, sis. <laughs> so it wasn't that much thought, but I personally just hate that Kiana got involved trying to defend somebody else and got hurt. You know what I mean? I hate that for her. Wendy arrives um, did not like that blonde hair. That wasn't it, Wendy. But Wendy is like, the energy is heavy. Like, how can we all celebrate something like this when we were all just in the emergency room until 4 a.m. just, you know, a day or two ago? It's odd. The energy is heavy. Karen said that, let's be real. Deborah should be mad at herself for lying on Chris. And I agree. Deborah, you came into this for whatever reason, whether Ashley put you up to it or not. And you sat up there and you lied and you said that Chris was making eyes at you and looking at your ass and all this type of stuff. You said that. You also said that Eddie was doing the same thing, which is where Happy Eddie came from. Bravo rolled the footage. Bravo rolled the, they, they, they rolled the tape. Chris wasn't thinking about you. So I don't know how you can even be mad at Candace when you lied on her husband and there is actual video proof that you lied on her husband. You lied. And you're refusing to back down from it. You're refusing to back down from it. Giselle, at the very least, apologized for saying Chris was a sneaky leak. And she apologized for saying Chris was trying to see if she was with it. She maintained she was uncomfortable. She maintained that Chris made her go into a room, but she did apologize for the sneaky leak and that type of stuff. She apologized at the reunion. Uh, Chris accepted Candace did not, but it, that is proof that's on tape, but you've been like doubling and tripling down about this, Deborah. I don't understand. I don't understand. You have proof proving you wrong, <laughs> but okay. Um, Apparently, Kay got 12 stitches. I said, God damn. I hope, I hope Kiana pressed charges. Well, if Kiana lunged at her first, I don't know how that would work because Deborah lunged at Candace, but then Kiana jumped in and lunged at Deborah. I don't know if she can press charges. I don't know if she can, but I hope that if she could, she did. There was literally no reason for you to pick up a glass and hit that woman. And in her face, hitting a woman in their face. So Ashley then said that it's not a good look for Candace to have a champagne bottle in her hand. While I agree with that because of the reasons I explained earlier, Ashley, shut the fuck up. Like the audacity of you to even say that when your friend started this. See, this is what I think happened. Ashley told Deborah, come on to the party. You can confront Candace at the party after everything wraps, right? You didn't think that it would go this far. Deborah had been drinking. De Deborah clearly was drinking all night. So Deborah took it a step too far. Deborah was probably probably supposed to just heckle Candace from the sideline. But Deborah had some liquid courage in her. So she ran up on her and then Kiana said, not over here. And Kiana got with her. Ashley, this is your fault and you know it's your fault. So when your ass is fired, don't be shocked. Don't say nothing. Cry your ass back to Michael because this should not have happened. Because not only did you risk... <laughs> Candace getting jumped for no reason but there could have had so many other trickle down effects that could have ruined Candace's life Candace's career Kiana's life Kiana's career Deborah's life as well you put the battery in Deborah's back for literally no reason I'm sorry but the lady is not that upset that she got called Sesame Street you're not so the ladies all start to gather by Karen's table. Karen thanks everybody for at least coming over to stand because for the first time in probably two seasons, the ladies are all standing in a group. 
outside of Candace and Winnie, you know, rolling their eyes at Giselle. And it's like, at this point, <laughs> whatever. So Wendy tells Ashley that your friend Deborah came with an agenda. Karen wants Ashley to speak up because it's your friend. I feel like this. If I take my, if I'm invited to a party, if I'm hosting an event and my friend comes, right? If my friend comes and my friend gets to fighting and gets into it with some other people, that is my responsibility. That does fall on me because I brought this person into this friend group, into this space into this party. Ashley, this is your responsibility though. You know what I mean? So Ashley is like, well, everyone is an adult and I'm not taking ownership because I don't need to take ownership. <laughs> Ashley's about to get fired. <laughs> Ashley is about to get fired, John. There's no way. So Ashley then said, well, Candace, you were talking about her, calling her vermin and stuff like that. Candace, of course, is going to deny. Well, I don't even know if I can say of course. I feel like whenever Candace does talk about you, she admits it. So Candace denies it. Candace denies it. Candace does admit when she has said stuff. Candace denies it, okay? So Ashley's in her confessional, and she said that Candace goes too far. You can't do all of this, right, and always go for the jugular, always cut to the white meat. And then expect that, not expect people to feel a way about it. I have said that time and time again about Candace. I have said that. Candace always goes a step too far. She does. Y'all like to think of her as being a wordsmith. But to me, a wordsmith is not somebody that just comes up with different ways to body shame people. You know what I mean? To me, that's not a wordsmith. I would give Wendy being a wordsmith over Candace. But that's just me. Candace does go too far though. She does. Candace always goes to the the to the depths of hell. And there are some people, like Ashley said, that don't play like that. Deborah's ass might be one, but Deborah is still in the wrong. Okay? Two things can be true. But at the end of the day, the one true fact about this entire scenario is that Deborah started this and Deborah is in the wrong. Right? Um, Karen feels that this is now just going to embolden people to feel that they can come up to us and attack us when we are, you know, with each other. And that is not what we want to get started. That's not what we want to get started further. What you don't want is for somebody to come on the show by way of Candace, right? One of Candace's friends or one of Wendy's friends. And then they haul off and hit Giselle's ass in the face. You don't want somebody that might come on by way of Giselle or Robin. And then they haul off and hit Wendy or Candace's ass. You don't want that. You don't even want people to feel that they can even think about doing that. So by Ashley bringing Deborah into this scenario, not taking accountability, not putting, you know, not holding Deborah's ass to the carpet, that's the that's the the narrative that Ashley's putting out, and it's a very dangerous narrative. I feel like that alone is going to have production and the network looking at her sideways on some. We don't like you could be a liability at this point, can um not Candace, um Ashley. You could be a liability at this point. What if Candace decides I don't feel safe filming with Ashley? She's well within her rights. Ashley brings around people that try to attack me. I don't want to film with Ashley anymore. I don't feel safe around Ashley anymore. Candace would be well within her rights to do so. So Mia said that this was planned and that Deborah, the next morning when she woke up, still doubled down on this. Ashley said, well, I will be more conscious about who I bring into the group. I said, you're going to have to be because you're about to be fired. But so then Giselle is like, I want to say one thing. Candace immediately, oh, Lord. And like that's what, whenever I say that Candace is like letting Giselle live rent free in her head. It's, it's in this instance, like you didn't even give her a chance to say what she was going to say. She wasn't there. So she has nothing to add to the conversation. Like, 
<laughs> so Giselle thanks them um, for reaching out. And she didn't be like, those of you that did. She thanks them for reaching out to check on her. And she like, you know, it says, especially Karen, Wendy and Candace do their same thing where they just can't stand the fact that Giselle talks. They really don't like the fact that Giselle and Karen have that type of friendship. Candace and Wendy would be head over heels if this were a season where Karen and Giselle were beefing. But the fact that they're not, they can't stand it. And it's clear. So I just put, it's getting old at this point. It's getting old at this point. It's getting old at this point. So we then get their final endings. I don't care about most of them. Um, I did laugh when they said Wendy's YouTube channel has started the Dr. Wendy show. She's hoping this one sticks. I said, so it's not just us that has pointed out that um, that Wendy has a different something every season. Somebody has pointed out that Robin has a different um, something every season too, from the flipping houses to the hats to this. Robin does too. We can say that about Robin. Yeah. Both of their asses have something new every single season. Sure. Um, and Neca's IUI was unsuccessful. And then we find out that Giselle's father has passed away shortly after his surgery. And no matter how y'all feel about her, her father did die. Like, F cancer forever and always. Like, we have all known somebody or we all know somebody or are dealing with something right now where we know a person that has succumbed to cancer. My maternal grandmother had breast cancer. You know what I mean? So rest in peace to her father, no matter how y'all feel about him, like you can at least, you know what I mean? Um, so then we skip three months later to Mia and Gordon. This is probably to me the most authentic that Mia has been on the show. This scene seemed very real. It didn't seem scripted. It didn't seem like they were putting on. This seemed like a real deal argument. So Mia is sleeping in there in Juju's room, her daughter's room. And well, first it starts with Eddie, a confessional with Wendy and Eddie. And Gordon apparently wrote into the the guys group chat that he was trying to get in contact with the ladies to let them know what was going on with him and, and Mia. That gave me, I want to try to blast Mia before y'all hear about anything. That's what that gave me. But long story short, he wanted to tell the guys that him and Mia were getting a divorce. Now, Eddie thought that it was just like a bad argument until everything hit the blogs. So Mia is in the room with Juju or in Juju's room. She comes out. And she's asking Gordon, how long are you going to be here? When are you going back to Charlotte? Gordon said, look, I'm only here because you told me to be. You asked me to be here to help you out with the kids. But if you got stuff, um, if, if you are done with your functions and you are able to take care of our kids and you don't need my help, fine, I'll take my ass back. And I said, oh, this is about to get, okay. So... Mia says in her confessional, Gordon is hurt. He does not want a divorce. And it's the same thing. Like, even at the end of this, Gordon is still like, I'm willing to move past all this so we can stay together. Gordon can't afford the divorce. That's what I get from it. Gordon doesn't have the money for the divorce. So in this scene, we find out that um, Gordon said that Mia has been having an affair on him for the past 10 years. Mia was going to visit another man that had a five bedroom house with the kids who we now know as Inc. He does not want his official, um, I'm going to say not his official name. He doesn't want his official, I guess, stage name to be used on the show because he doesn't want this to affect his brand. Okay. So Gordon said that he was giving Mia a pass and all this type of stuff, we find out that Jeremiah told Gordon that um, Mia was sleeping with Ink in the same room. And it's like, Mia, were you really taking your kids to your side nigga's house? Come on, Mia. Come on, Mia. I mean, Mia has solidified her, her um, next season. Her and uh, Karen will definitely be back because they both have storylines that we now see. But... 
Gordon said that he gave her a pass because he couldn't perform like he used to after his prostate cancer, but he had two rules. Be discreet. Don't let the kids get involved. Mia broke both of those. Um, we then find out that Juju was asking Gordon, why is mommy replacing you with Mr. Ink? I said, oh, Mia, Mia, Mia. Gordon apparently took Mia's phone and locked her in a room for two days. And I mean, not for two days, for two hours. And he was like, yeah, because you need it to rest. And she's like, but I'm not a child. So Mia would apparently spend all day texting Ink. Ink thinks that Jeremiah is his. Mia said, that's not fair. Gordon said, if you want fair, go to a carnival. Okay. Um, Mia said that <clears throat> she told Gordon, Jeremiah might not be yours because of the timeline. She is alleging that Gordon was like, that's fine. I love you. I'm going to take care of the baby as it's mine. There has not been a paternity test. That is irresponsible, Mia. That is irresponsible for you to not get a paternity test on that child so he knows who his fucking father is. Oh my God, can you imagine if Ink is the father? Now this poor boy, the fact that it's coming out on TV, Jeremiah is old enough to watch TV. <sighs> This is ridiculous. Gordon is like, now the fact that you on this show, this was a come up. You got you a little bag now. You don't need me. Mia said, look, if it was because of the money, I'd have left your ass seven or eight years ago. Apparently, Gordon spends excessively. He will be out at the strip clubs and probably trying to find a newer, younger you. She also then pointed out, well, I give you money to eat. So don't come in, and like, you can tell Mia was trying to play nice, but when he started mentioning that much, she said, stop the money bullshit. I give you fucking money to eat. I am literally feeding you, nigga. Like, Mia was, like, over it. Um, Gordon says that he's willing to move forward for the sake of the kids, and it's like, Gordon. <sighs> It was a lot. Um, it was a lot. They played the same clip from the reunion. The reunion looks interesting to me. Um, it's going to be much of the same old, same old. But uh, Andy sent a very intent message going into this reunion. Y'all got to move on. Ideally, I would like to see if they would bring back the entire cast to see if these women can move forward. I know, like, we know the two groups, right? Karen, Wendy, Candace are on one side and we're just putting Karen, Karen really is neutral, but we're putting Karen over there. And I think Karen puts herself more so on that side to keep a good balance. Then we have Ashley, Giselle, Robin, no matter what side you are on, they are not going to get rid of the other side, right? So whenever people are like, I hope Giselle and Robin leave, they're not going to fire both. The same way they're not going to fire both Candace and Robin. I mean, Candace and Wendy. Ideally, I think Candace and Robin's ass should go, to be real. I think Wendy would be more willing to sit down with Giselle and vice versa if Candace is not in the picture. I think the two of them have a better chance of mending things than Giselle and Candace. And I only say Candace should go because... Candace is not going to move forward with Giselle or Robin. You have two people that she just is not going to move forward with. So I think Candace can go and Robin can go because Robin has nothing left to give us. We have seen Robin be broke. We've seen Robin start business after business. We've seen Robin move out of that uh, townhouse to that apartment to a, a bigger townhouse up the street, now to building her house. Like, there is literally nothing left for Robin to give us. So I think if they move on from Candace, move on from Robin, I think the group would have more unison. You can bring on Kiana, or you find another completely, well, Kiana, because she knows everybody, bring on Kiana, and I think the, the group might gel more. That, that forces Giselle to stand on her own. Forces Giselle to stand on her own. She doesn't have Robin to constantly hide behind. Well, let's be real. Ashley's ass is going to be fired too. 
<laughs> y'all, let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Do you think it's Candace's fault? Do you think it's Deborah's fault? There is only right answer, one right answer, and it is it's Deborah's fault. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Peace.